Doom, Doom Whisper. Whisper. Yeah. Brad Bonin was saying that he'd like to open any card that whispers at him. Oh, here we go. We got pack one, pick <laughs> one here. Let's see. Woo. Okay, there's a Watcher in the Mist. That isn't a fine finality, is it? No, no I believe he, it's the status statue. Yeah, which is also quite good, though. Mm -hmm. Interesting. He's got Chemister's Insight, Watcher in the Mist, and status statue pulled to the front. There's also a Pelt Collector at Rare, and then a Rosemain Centaur. So you can see very clearly the cards that Ari is contemplating here. Wow, this is actually a fairly tough pick, I would think. Yeah, this is a very difficult pick. I mean, Status Statue seems like it's just the most versatile card. Right, but it's also the... Uh, the double color card. Yeah, it's, it's gold. But unconditional removal at instant speed for four mana is something you don't get very often. It's also very easy to splash, because oftentimes it'll be very easy to cast the status part of that card. <coughs> and uh, you can still use it to trade with one of your opponent's cards, and then... If you ever draw that green and or black that's a splash, then you get Statue, which is obviously just a great limited card. Here's Luminous Bonds. Here's Luminous Bonds now for Ari. He's also looking at... <laughs> you want to go deep, buddy? You see that? He had Guild Summit pulled to the front and kind of gave it, gave it a little head shake, like, well... Baby, come back. That's a trigger that I'd like to pull. I, I love Guild <coughs> Summit. That's a card that I, I've had a lot of success with already. Um, you know, I think if you have six to seven gates, that card g becomes one of the most powerful drawing en engines in this limited format. In this pack here, uh, Direct Current just way ahead of the curve in terms of power level. Yeah, but Everything he's got Swarm Guild Mage. Remember, he took Status Statue. Yeah, I mean, Direct Current would be going in a completely different direction, whereas Swarm Guild Mage is you know, just a great two-drop. Is it? It is. I, th I think I have, it, I have it at good. I, th those two abilities d don't add up to great for me. Yeah, great may be uh, I mean, do you an disagree? aggressive call. I, I've, I've lost to that first ability more than once. Yeah. It, it breaks up a board stall. Mm -hmm. What it doesn't do is help create one. That's also true. Which is why I kind of have it in the good, not great camp. <coughs> Excuse me. Ooh, Rock Charger. Very powerful. Uncommon in this set. He's looking at the Demir Guildgate. I, I honestly wonder if, if Ari is considering the, the, uh, <laughs> the possibilities for that Guild Summit. I wouldn't blame him. And there, there's a lot of payoff to be had there. <coughs> Rock Charger, uh, particularly strong in this set. You know, the uh, this type of card has been really good for the last few sets, but uh, in a set that has the mentor mechanic, it's particularly strong. Now, there's a Guild Mage I like even a bit better. The Conclave yeah. Guild Mage, Jake. The, I, I think this one is quite a bit better than the Swarm Guild Mage. Now, Ari won his Pro Tour with Obzon, right? Am I, do I remember that correctly? You do remember that correctly. Okay, well, it looks like he's, he's running uh, it back. <laughs> <laughs> All hail the rhino. There you go. The moo cow cometh. But here <laughs> he's got, uh, he's got a, a mix of, of green, white, and black cards so far. There's a Molder Hulk. And Skyline uh, Scout. Hmm. Oh, boy. That's got to be a tough one to see. A Skylight Legion, Sky Knight Legionnaire this late, though. I haven't, I haven't felt like Boros is open. Have you Have you felt that way? Um, I mean, he saw a direct current, but that was second pick. You're right. So it's direct like hard current, to, current, you know, yeah. really draw much of a conclusion from that. He took Sky Knight Legionnaire. Yeah, and this is what I talked about before. This is a big signal here from, for Ari. Yeah, if you're, if you're willing to, to stay open in drafts like this, you can get very rewarded because people aren't going to switch gears. And, uh, you know, finding your place at the table uh, will often reward you with at least a 2-1. And a 2-1 is right where you want to be when you come into the day at 9 now. So this is interesting, though, because Ari still has to kind of decide between the two, unless he's going to do some four-color nonsense. But a as we see it right now, he ends up taking the Celestia Guildgate, and now he's going to take Healer's Hawk. And, boy, he had no hesitation there. He windmill slammed that Healer's Hawk. So, 
I'm, I'm curious. We're, we're, seeing, we're starting to see where Ari's going because we saw the Sky Knight Legionnaire and now mm -hmm. a Healer's Hawk. But in between, Celestia Guildgate. So, curious, curious, curious. It's hard to make all of those fit together. There's that Rosemane Centaur. Now Celestia is starting to really seem like it's a thing. He's got a couple of good black cards for a splash in a Celestia deck, specifically Statue. Yeah, he has status statue, and uh, you know, depending on how m much token shenanigans end yeah. up in the deck, that Swarm Guild Mage totally. could get pretty good. Yeah, you know, I think that the Swarm Guild Mage is actually happiest in Celestia. I absolutely agree with that. Yeah, because you're you're leveraging the plus one plus zero oh part of that, and the menace is nice too. But to actually get more power per activation and finish the game off, so could be where we're going here, Jake. Yeah, that Guild Summit came back to him. But, yeah, uh, but it looks like that ship has sailed. Ari firmly in Celestia base right now with, I would call it, a likely splash attempt for that statue at this point and the Swarm Guild Mage too. Wow. Well, that was Might of the Masses. Yeah, now that, I think, you know, some pump spells are just replaceable cards in your deck, but when you're Celestia, Might of the Masses has the ability to just win the game completely out of nowhere. The card also often creates, you know, as much as seven or eight points of damage yeah. out of nowhere and uh, steals a lot of games. For one mana. <laughs> Not bad. Huh. Yeah, the interesting also, I think one of the things, oh, nice. Uh, one of the things that we got to see here as well as you look at the picks here from Ari and how they came in order, um, he did not want to be Golgari. And he there's a not. good reason for that. It's bad. It's I real agree. bad. I, I agree. think it's just bad. And I don't think that he wanted to, to be in that. It's, it's been ranked as fifth out of five guilds in this set by most people that I've talked to. Uh, I have it ranked fifth out of five. I do too. I would really prefer to not be in it. But you know, nothing wrong with stealing a pick or two from them, especially a card as powerful as Statue or even the Guild Mage. Yeah, and I, f I find that the, the most successful Gugari decks just happen to be decks that are piles of good cards. You know, you have a lot of dead weights, you have a lot of deadly visits, you, you know, have just good green creatures, and uh, you know, you're winning on card power level more than you're winning on synergy, whereas the, a lot of these other guilds get to really. Uh, like push their synergies much harder. It's really it, it, the ways to fill your graveyard uh, are very plentiful and constructed. Uh, but when you're talking about limited, it can it can be hard to balance all of that out with the rest of your deck and still be able to, you know, survive on key turns. Yeah, you never want to be at the mercy of the packs to that level, right? Where you, at the end of the day, you go, well, how many uncommons and rares did I get? Oh, my deck's pretty good, I guess. Like that. That's mm -hmm. not what limited's about. It's about putting together a cohesive unit of cards, regardless of rarity, ideally with a bunch of uncommons and rares, but you can put together, ooh, Light of the Legion. That's a nice one to open when you're already heavily dedicated to white here. Boy, that's a nice pack for him, too. There was a Rock Charger in that pack. A second one of those would have been sweet. Yeah, and I think, uh, you know, based on how things have been going and uh, how open green is, I think he's hoping to wheel that Might of the Masses here. I think you're right, Jake. And I think he's got a real good shot at it. The I last agree. one came very late. By the way, you're supposed to, like, by, by means of strategy, just randomize the cards before you pass them, just so somebody can't get an idea of, like, oh, he was looking at these, you know, the, these were his three picks that he didn't take or whatever. But Ari goes for the full, <laughs> he does a riffle shuffle on the first <laughs> pack. I'm like, that is dedication. I love it. Okay. Pack two, pick one. Dev Karen Dissident, nope. Luminous Bonds just jumped to the front there. There's yeah. a few other Boros cards that, you know, probably catch Ari's eye but aren't going to be cards he's actually going to go for. The Boros Challenger, there was a Sky Knight Legionnaire in that first pack as well, but yeah, he's just going to be in straight Celestia here, it looks like. Maybe a little splashy splash. Yeah, Luminous Bonds are uh, great in these Celestia decks where you often have a lot of smaller creatures. Uh, it allows you to take the one large creature on your opponent's side of the board out of commission so that you still have good attacks where you're forcing your opponent to either trade or just take damage. I also like the art on that. Like, what is that creature that's being all bonded up there? I don't know what that is. Poor guy. Our healing patrols pulled to the front now for Ari. What are his other choices here? Uh, Siege Worm, Guildgate. Ooh, interesting. So you can see, though, that Ari is all about 
being aggressive here because Siege Worm, you know, in Celestia, that's kind of the name of the game, right? Yeah, so I, Get I a think... Get a big 5-5 five five trampler for cheap? I think it, it depends on uh, the, the type of Celestia deck that, that you're trying to build. Because uh, he's definitely going aggressive, it looks like. Yeah, he, he is trying to build an aggressive deck, but uh, he also has a lot of interactive spells, a lot of removal spells. Uh, he has spells that reward him for, for going wider. Um, oh, there's a card that's really good against him. Deafening Clarion? <laughs> wow. Take Heart, another locks it on Restore. There's another Siege Worm. He does not seem interested in Siege Worm at all. He's going to take the Death Care and Dissident, paying very close attention to his mana curve. Wheeling these Siege Worms seems a little, uh, a little optimistic, so I think he just really wants the curve here. I, you know, thinking back to his first pack and, and what he's gotten here, he doesn't have that many twos at this point, so he probably is feeling the pressure to get that mana curve sorted out here rather than trying to take seven drops that some kind, sometimes cost four or five. Uh, yeah, I, I think there's a lot of value to be had there. There's another Def Karen Dissident. Does he want another one? Maybe. Yeah, and I mean, it, it's, it's a below average two drop, but it's still a fine two drop. Yeah. Uh, the thing about this, this is, is that, like you said just a second ago, he doesn't really have any two drops before that. You know, he has the, the Guild Mage that's on color. Yeah. Um, it doesn't look like he's splashing anymore. Which means the you know the swarm guild mage you picked up will likely not be in the deck. So he needs more twos. He needs to be able to be aggressive to really take full advantage of that removal because he's not going to have the card advantage to win in a late game against uh, somebody like a demir deck. Ooh, lots of interesting picks here for him. There's a district guide. Yeah. And he's going to windmill slam that. There's also a crushing canopy. Really one of the best, if not the best, sideboard card in the format. You can even main deck it when you need to. And then there was a few curve fillers for him there too as options but he's going to go with the district guide which does open up the possibility of him splashing for that statue and maybe even the uh the swarm guild mage too yeah district guide uh, a card that helps you splash it accrues card advantage uh it plays defense it plays offense this is just a you know a hallmark uncommon of this set i kind of like the world soul colossus here he's he's made a few picks that help curve help his curve out and while that card hasn't been super impressive i do like it i do like to be able to just slam a big creature and sort of make them deal with it i think he yeah i, I my, my gut said he was going to take the prey upon but i like i like getting a big creature in there every once in a while with these curve out decks and you need a couple uh couple fatty boom booms to play when you're playing prey upon also yeah but prey upon's a nice one and uh ari certainly feels Oh, this is interesting. He'd like to have Take Heart just as a cheap pump spell, but that Golgari Guild Gate goes up a lot with that District Guide. Yeah, the thing about taking the Take Heart Whoa, is you don't really want to... took the worry Okapi. Yeah, I mean, he, he does need more creatures. I, I, does I he? absolutely agree with that pick. Oh, uh, man. And the, this is exactly what I was going to say, is the reason he doesn't want to take that Take Heart is because there's a much more powerful pump spell I wanted him to take that's the right about to come. It, I mean, that's, that's maybe maybe also just, defensible. Maybe he just doesn't want that many guild gates because of the tapped. I mean, the district guy can just go get him a swamp. He doesn't need a guild gate. Yeah. Also, and he might he just not more be creatures. The, does he? Yeah. Weary Okapi, though? Eh, it's a fine body. It really isn't. <laughs> You're way too nice. That card's a stinker, man. I mean, it's cute. It's adorable. But that's his third Dev Karen Dissident. That curve is starting to look fine. I mean, he's taking a bunch of two drops here over Siege Worms and the like. But clearly, you, you know, the, reading the tea leaves here, Ari feels there's that Siege Worm. Wheeled it. He's like, boom, shakalaka. We did it. Uh, he clearly feels like this is a, uh, he wants to build this deck very aggressively. He's going to take the fine broker there, but. Won't be able to splash that one. Golgari's open. Not surprising. Yeah, I don't think many people would want to be drafting Golgari. I think, though, that Ari has correctly recognized that green is wide open. Yes. Like, we saw Siege Worm come super late. And yeah. unfortunately, you know, he hasn't been getting so rewarded for that because there just haven't been that many super powerful green cards. Mm -hmm. The ways in which he's gotten rewarded for it have been super late cards like Siege Worm, super late cards like Might of the Masses. He's, he's wheeled two, two different Might of the Masses. Yeah. And that, that's the, 
the, probably the best pump spell in the format. Like in the, his deck? Yeah, I mean, he, he has the ability to go wide. Um, he, he has, you know, mana sinks that create tokens. Oh, yeah. Uh, there are going to be a lot of games for him, I imagine, where his plan is to set up and then knock him down with the Might of the Masses. And let's not forget that he opened Light of the Legion here, just a, a great A bomb mm -hmm. in general, and in this deck, a great curve topper. Boy. I tell you what, that Rock Charger is going to do overtime as well. This deck is coming together very nicely for Ariolax. Remember, we still have another pack to go here. Yeah, he's already got enough playables at this point. He's just looking for upgrades. <laughs> right. He's got the, the two copies of Luminous Bond, the Prey Upon that he took as well. If he wants to go for the statue, he can play that as well. So he has the removal. He also has a Righteous Blow, though. I don't know if he wants that in, in this aggressive of a deck. But you can see, at least the vibe I get here is he's very concerned with that mana curve, with his creature mana curve. That's what he wants. He wants to fill out that low to mid part of his curve, the fours, the threes, the twos specifically, and maybe even a few more healer's hawks if he can get lucky. One of the cards that he really hasn't seen is the beetle. Yeah, and the beetle combos nicely with healer's hawk. It yeah. uh, works well with convoke. Uh, it's in terms of uh, you know commons that you often see going around quite late uh, Iron Shell Beetle is really just the the Selesna filler you're yeah, looking for. But he hasn't seen one, or at least hasn't I don't, I don't think there's, one. Yeah. I don't think he's even seen one. I don't think so yeah. either. That's a common. So. How about Tristani here? Oh, that'd be good. Would that be good? I think so. Vigor Spore Worm. And he picked up the uh, the big spider, the hatchery spider, which yeah, is so. an undergrowth payoff. It's a bit overpriced for his deck at seven mana, though. Yeah, there's, there's nobody can voke that out. And, right. Uh, you know, he also doesn't really have much in the way of, you know, undergrowth shenanigans. Uh, the, this, the wood shaper is decent in his deck because not only can it find a creature, but he has multiple copies of luminous bonds, right. so it actually is pretty good at tutoring up a, a hard removal spell. So he may be thinking about that. Yeah, it looks like he's got it down to Somala wood shaper sprouting renewal. He's going to go for the renewal here. Perhaps not super impressive on either side, but the flexibility makes up for it. Yeah, and the thing about the Wood Shaper is that it could easily wheel here, because it doesn't look like anybody else is in Celesnia. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised at all to see that come back. Oh, there we go. Another Rosemane Centaur. A great payoff for his deck, and exactly what he's been building towards this whole time. So really nice pickup there from Ari. Yeah, and still, though, I think he's... He was hoping to get more power out of these early picks. Okay. You know, like a Rosemane Centaur is, again, it's the kind of card where I think he's, he's imagining wheeling cards like that. He I doesn't see. want to be using his early picks on them. Yeah, another piece of removal wouldn't hurt. Another Rock Charger or something like that would Ooh, be real yeah. nice. You know, and we're not dreaming too big, right? It's just an uncommon. Like, yeah, that, that's not, not dreaming big at all. Yeah. No, no, you're not asking too I mean, much. I mean, did, I did ask for Tristani. <laughs> <laughs> But now that that didn't come in, I'm fine with the Rock Charger. Venerated Loxodon? I'm, I'm bartering with the Magic Gods on behalf of Ari Lax now somehow for having put myself in his seat. Well, it's not a Rock Charger, but it is a Healer's Hawk, and that is a card that he wanted quite badly. We mentioned it at the end of the last pack, and he picked it up and windmilled it. Not even close. Ari's a big fan of Healer's Hawk. And interestingly enough, he, he doesn't really have a lot of ways to pump these Healer's Hawks just yet. Uh, although he, he did have a couple copies of Candlelight Vigil, which I doubt will make his deck. <laughs> yeah, he could do it maybe out of the board or something. Yeah, against opponents without a lot of removal, that could be a, uh, a really effective way to... Uh, oh, it's basically Lyra. Yeah, to build your own Lyra. <laughs> build your own bad Lyra with <laughs> two cards. All right, let's see what he's got here out of this next pack. Well, nothing too exciting for him. He's got the Vernati Shield Mate, the Hunted Witness. There was a generous stray in there as well. But again, Ari's proclivities for this Celestia deck are towards the aggressive end rather than the pure uh, convoke angle. You know, mm -hmm. we saw him consistently valuing low curve creatures rather than the Convoke payoffs, like the World Soul Colossus. He passed both Siege Worms. One of them came back. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, Ari very much is trying to play the straight-up curve-out game here. That's an overgrown tomb, which is fine. It's going to take it here. 
I guess there was a Sumala wood shaper and a prey upon in that pack that he gave up on. Yeah. Uh, Overgrown Tomb comes into play untapped, you know, allows him to continue to curve out, potentially gives him uh, that splash option. Now he has a District Guide and an Overgrown Tomb. Could also play a Swamp. It's essentially like having three black sources for that uh, statue if he wants it. Mm -hmm. And again, the aggressiveness continues here. Yeah, and, and Blade Instructor. The Blade Instructor is perfect for his deck. He has multiple copies of Healer's Hawk. Uh, you know, you talked about this a lot yesterday where you said that Healer's Hawk is a card that you can essentially ignore <laughs> when it's a 1-1 flying lifelink. But the moment that thing picks up a single plus one plus one counter, it becomes something that's incredibly difficult to race. And Blade Instructor is a really good way to do that. Trade off or something on the ground with your Blade Instructor, but she throws a counter upwards towards the sky. And that counter lasts longer. Ooh, Parhelion Patrol. Another four drop for him, but boy, that's a nice one to pick up. The only card, you know, it's funny that the, the more and more I see how this is shaped up for Ari, the more and more I realize how few Iron Shell Beetles he's seen and would have really liked to have. Yeah, they would have been really good in his deck. He yeah. hasn't seen many Hawks, he hasn't seen many Iron Shell Beetles, and it, it does seem like he's, he's wide open. Mm -hmm. It seems like he, f he found where he was supposed to be this draft, and, uh, you know, a lot of the payoffs for it weren't there. Though his deck is very good. I'm not trying to say that his no, deck No, no, it is. It is. I think he, he found I'm, I'm getting nitpicky, to. but yeah. Yeah. I do, I do also find it, like, I want to give Ari a lot of credit for having first picked a Golgari card, but kind of knew better than to go down that route and was mm -hmm. looking. He dabbled in Celestia. And also even took a, a very brief glance at Boros. Ended up settling in Celestia. And he knows how he wants to draft this, this archetype. Lean and mean, low to the ground. He's going to take Vigor Spore Worm here. Oh, wow. No respect for the Wood Shaper, even with those Luminous Bonds. That's, that's interesting. I'm, I'm interested to talk to him about that. Yeah, I think he's, he might still have a shot at one, but I, I wouldn't... Yeah, I, feels like one in your deck would be... Kind of where you'd want to be. <coughs> it is a little slow, a little clunky, a little low powered. Crawl foragers. There's a join shields. Perhaps something he could consider for the sideboard, but it's a pretty, pretty clunker of a card. Yeah, I used to take the foragers here. Though you've got to feel like he's got plenty of creatures now. Wow, Ukraine Assassin. That card can be pretty annoying. So that card gets scary. Yeah. He has, Especially he has pump with spells. Light of the Masses. I, yeah. maybe, maybe he'll play it. Locks it on Restore. He's already got a couple of those, so this one probably is going to end up in the board. But, you know, you can still play an extra one against Boros, and card does really good work against them. Maniacal Rage, and we're going to end up last card, a Boros Locket. So there's your, your draft for Ari Lax here in pod number one early in the morning. Here from GP Montreal. Welcome back to the booth. I'm Marshall Sutcliffe, and that is Jacob Van Lunen. Thanks so much for coming along. We got a chance to see Ari Lax put his touch on this. And again, there's a lot to be taken from these drafts. Now, you have to be able to kind of translate it. But the thing that stood out to me was that he didn't want to be in Golgari. Even after taking a Golgari card pack one, pick one, he kind of knew right away that this is going to go in a Demir deck or this is going to go in a Celestia deck or something like that. And the other thing was. He views Celestia as a very aggressive, like the, that the right way to draft this uh, set, or excuse me, this archetype, is not to focus on the obvious, which is Convoke, right? That's the thing that it gets that other decks don't, where you can say, I'm going to play out these creatures way sooner than you normally would and get an advantage from that. He feels like this is a very straightforward beatdown deck that has Convoke as kind of an upside that you can use every once in a while. He clearly prioritized the cheaper Convoke cards as well, and the one drops, you know, he, I think he wants to go 